Greetings fam, welcome back to my channel. This is your sis Kathy, Kathy Vett coming to you live and direct from sunny New Jersey. Yes, it's been pretty nice. New York, New Jersey area, Northeast, you know, it's usually crazy, but um, it hasn't been too bad. Hasn't been bad at all when it comes to weather compared to a lot of the areas across the map that we used to having you know, maybe nicer weather than us. We always get the bad end of the stick, but God has been good to us this winter. Keeping our fingers crossed. <laughs> Hoping it stays that way. But I am ready to get into our favorite group of women on Sisters Now. I have been busy, so I really didn't get a chance to get into um, all... Uh, both episodes 15 and 16 so we're going to get into it now I'm going to combine it because our new episode is coming tonight <laughs> so I want to catch up on the discussion from the last two episodes I'm going to kind of combine it so stay tuned and let's get into it <laughs> Now, two weeks ago, we know we left off with our boy Preston proposing to Danny. Now, it's not... <laughs> Danny is so drained from this conversation, as you know. He loves her, and he just wants to know how he can love her and move forward. And Danny admitting to care about him. She does. She really does love him. But at the, at the same time, I can love you and care about you, but not be ready for marriage. How much do they really know? How much does he know about her and she know about him to want to get married? And that's one of the things that, you know, she got into with him. Like, you know, what is your friend, your closest friend saying about this? He's like, they think that I should go, you know, marry old girl back home, forgot her name because she's a really good girl. He was like, well, do that. But he don't want her. So why give me this ultimatum that you're going to marry her if I don't do what you say or if I act like I don't care. Okay, I do care. You know that. I admitted that to you. So now what? You can't keep threatening to marry. Why marry someone you don't want, Preston? You know, and of course, I love Preston. I wish they, they would get together. But he has to understand the situation. And he always had like this goofy look on his face. You know, Preston. Like, huh? What are you talking about? We need to get to know each other. There's things you need to know about being with a black woman. I need to know about being with a black man. This is all new to both of us. Give me time to digest it before you spring a ring on me. That would be great to say yes, but I can understand now why she can't say yes. I mean, the reality, let us take our time. Like he said when he first flew out and they were talking in front of the house that this is, you know, take one day at a time, Danny. Yes, take one day at a time. So why are you giving me a ring if you saying we're going to take this piece by piece? And that's what she agreed on. So now you want to just jump on me and suffocate me to come up with this, you know, proposal of a ring when you know good and doggone well. And neither one of us are really ready for that. OK, so Preston just needs to chill and just give it time and take it step by step. So she sneaks into the uh, bathroom to tell Sabrina, Sabrina, like what you say, because, you know, of course, everybody likes Preston. He's a cool guy. So, of course, she hoping that she say yes, but she frazzled like, oh, my God, like, I don't know what to do. Like, this is too much. So, of course, your girls can, can cheer you on. But at the end of the day, it's your decision. And Danny just like. She ain't with that right now. And and I get it. So then, in the meantime, Sabrina's talking to Calvin. Of course, he's trying to console her. They're on the couch talking. She's practically in tears, like, what to do with Maurice. At the end of the day, Maurice is in a bad situation, just like you, Sabrina. And he really has to deal with the situation in and of itself as well. Yeah, Sabrina supposed to have been the branch manager or whatever. But if you think about it, when it comes to Calvin in that situation, with Maurice, they allowed that to happen. And 
Sabrina really is is not her fault to get him out of jail. It, she doesn't even know how much it took for Danny, I mean for Andy to get her out of jail. And now she's putting the pressure on herself with, as a good-hearted person as she is. But you're putting a lot on you, Sabrina. And put in the comments, what do you think? You think this is too much? You know, you think that she's that much of should be that much of a friend to try to work to get her friends to to get him out of jail for a situation that she wasn't too keen on? to begin with so yeah they're talking she's really scared she's practically in tears she like maurice get gotta get out of there because they know you know he's gonna be basically chopped liver in that situation um you know with his sexuality and you know uh, prison and just the things that they got to deal with in there he, that he's gonna have to fight off and she, she's feeling pretty scared and calvin is too so you know um maurice is basically you know he's supposed to be calling her soon anyway he told calvin to try to deal with the situation, try to get somebody, um, you know, to to help him. And hopefully Andy can do that. Now, in the meantime, Andy's on the phone with Robin talking about trying to, as she promised Sabrina, you know, if you could do me another favor. Um, it's really hard because, you know, he's dealing with the stuff with the money and losing the company because of her man, Gary. Um trying to get another bail for Maurice. And he's like, oh my God, are you sure you can trust these people? You know, I already put up a million and a half for your one friend you vouch for. Now, your friend's friend, y'all really asking a lot from Robin. For somebody who you really basically cut off and be cold. I know how he treated you in the office when he thought you were sleeping with the janitor. But in looking at his situation as well, you know, and what he heard in the whole email, it, it, you know, it was kind of tricky on his end, too. Like, what kind of woman am I really dealing with? Also knowing about old boy Gary and how shady and no good he is. You know, how promiscuous is this, this girl? So it, it kind of, you know, he didn't have to be as nasty, but you got to kind of get a guy a break, too. You done gave Gary a whole lot of breaks for a whole lot worse, and you still want to be with him. So let's get real. So she talked to him, and, you know, they she talking. Of course, she know how to lay on the charm when she wants something, Andy. Um, other than that, you can be cold to a brother, too. But you forgave him for that and got past that. He apologized. But you still don't, you know, you don't want to go out to dinner when you don't do none of that. But he, of course, willing to still, he must really care about you, to still stick his nose out there, his reputation, all these connections he have for you, Andy. He's pulling a lot of strings for you. For somebody he hasn't known that long. And with all the hell you went through with Gary, you got to think about why you won't give this man a chance. And now you ask her for another favor. So that's what she was doing. Now, in the meantime, old boy Gary is listening at the door and heard what she was saying with, with old boy. So now he's nervous. He's sweet talking her. Of course, you want to get a little sum and they have their little rendezvous. But then he's sneaking off in the room letting Hayden know. <laughs> That I think she knows Andy's on to us. I think she told Robin, blah, blah, blah. And, and you know, Hayden is really want to talk about his boo thing that's in the bathroom. <laughs> He's about to get some. So he really don't want to hear none of that that Gary got to say. Gary like, man, listen, I don't want to hear about this woman. You got to know about this situation we dealing with with Robin and her. He was like, okay, um, you know, I got this honey here and, you know, she fine. I'm about to get whatever. <sighs> Gary like, okay. <laughs> so that, that conversation was pr practically null and void because Hayden at this point is just looking out for himself and Gary's like, okay, we going to deal with this another time. You go do you. So old girl comes in and she's seducing him and I'm like, you, you about got him. I hope he don't fall, you know, suspect. But right now his mind is about to be blown. So old girl kissing on him. She's taking off his shirt. I'm like, oh, okay, Aiden. You know, I would think he was real sexy. You got a really nice smile. If I couldn't stand your little <laughs> self so bad. I mean, the brothers on here are fine. Their character is what makes them ugly. They play it. I can't stand them. But in real life, they probably like really good because Aiden is a good looking brother. But yeah, so she's up there trying to seduce him. And he's on there like, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, all blown away or whatever by her. She's kissing on him, taking his clothes off or whatever. And so it's about to be on and pop. And Hayden don't see nothing. <laughs> so it, it's working so far. Now, in the meantime, oh, speaking of looking good, our boy uh, Zach is coming down with his nice suit and tie. Uh, the tie wasn't too crazy about how, how many I like that look, but he could have did better on the tie choice. But anyway, I digress. He's talking to Fatima. She said, oh, you look good. And he's chit-chatting with her about, 
you know, he's going to deal with these women. He's going to go meet Karen. He thought, you know, she's going to go with him because, of course, she wanted to be there when she, he met her at the house. But she's like, no. I mean, I get it. Handle your business as a man. Fatima don't always have to be there. She has to trust him to make the right decision and do what he needs to do without having her there. I mean, yeah. So he took it upon himself. The situation with Heather, I guess she just dealing with Hayden and the whole your attorney deal with my attorney thing because she ain't answering no calls for him. So it's like pretty null and void when it comes to dealing uh, verbally or communicating with Heather in that situation. But that's that's for another day in time. Now she's dealing with the situation with Karen. He has the papers. He really want to go over there to have her sign. She was like, I trust you. You're going to do what you got to do. And basically, I'll talk to you later. So he's okay. So that's that. Now, um, he notices also, she was like, <laughs> oh, girl got the rock on. <laughs> she, her hands all blinged out. So, um, no, I'm single. This just cost some jury. <laughs> so she's like, yeah. He was like, oh, you got the ring? She was like, yeah. So he was happy with that. I guess she said, cat's out the bag. I can wear my thing now. So he was like, cool. And they walked out. So he's about to hit the salon. Well, that's a whole nother story. So now, Danny comes out getting ready for work. And, of course, uh, I hate a man laying in the bed. Ladies, put your comments in there. I hate when you're going out to work and, and the man you're supposed to be dealing with is still laying in the bed. You better act like you're going to work. Even if you don't have to and you filthy rich, you better act like you're doing something. Because I hate leaving a man in the bed while I'm going out to work. But he laying around. And he about to go back home. I guess he like that didn't work out, the engagement. So she was like, okay, I'll see you at the airport. Um, it is what it is. I'm not going to change my mind. And if you just on one track and not want to discuss this, and you just either you marry me or I'm going to marry my ex, then go on, boo. Don't do what you got to do. But I'm not going frust my, to frustrate myself with this if you feel this is the only alternative. Because he really could stay with her and talk, and they really need to get into this and figure out where they're going to continue with this outside of marriage. You know, are you going to stay in that state and dabble and figure out what you're going to do with this girl? Um, or do you really want to be with me? Let's let's figure this out. You don't have to stay in one place, Preston. If we're going to make this work, we're going to make it work. So that's the situation. He was like, well, okay, I'm going and I'll see you at the airport, I guess, when he comes through. So she was like, okay, I'll see you there. Now, um, Andy popped in Robin's office for a minute. You know, she gave him, you know, the number or whatever to the guy that's supposed to help him with the money for the place. Some guy, you go, it's going some shady dealings, ain't somebody all aboard, legit, but somebody that will have the money, an old client that she knows. And so she gave him that information. And he thanked her for it. So he's also, um, she's waiting for him to also get that info on helping Maurice with the bail situation. Now, Andy goes in to talk to Fatima and, you know, see how she feeling after the whole situation with Karen at the house. And she's saying, we good. And she sees that she got the ring on or whatever. She was like, yes. Now, in the meantime, old girl calls to fill Fatima in on the situation with Hayden. Let her know she got him. He blind, girl. I can get him to do whatever I want. She was like, okay, that's good. Now, Andy can overhear what's going on with the girl. And she also lets him know that he's talking about overthrowing this company. Now, Hayden is running his mouth just like she knew. <laughs> like the wimp that he is. He's sitting up there going on and on with this girl that he don't even know about what he's doing to take over the company with Gary and you know, um, she's on speaker. So basically, <laughs> Andy can hear all this. Why you want to be with a man like Gary after what he's trying to do to somebody you've been, been with and the head of your company? Why? Do you want to still open your legs for this man? It's beyond me, Andy. But sometimes a fear of the heart. Don't make your head uh, think right. But anyway, so she goes into um, listening and, you know, Andy's like, oh. So she said, yeah. And supposedly Hayden dealt with Heather in the past. And she that's why he want to help her or whatever. Because this guy, Zach, took him away from her or whatever so evidently Hayden was dealing with stripper girl and he pissed off now for another reason besides Fatima that supposedly she took him away so now he doing this this taking this case on to help old girl out that's what it sounds like and I'm like huh are you serious Hayden 
So that what that situation was about. So she gets to hear all of this and then she's like, wow, well, I can understand um, why you're doing it, but I'm not saying that I agree with that. But um, Fatima said, yeah, well, we got to do what we got to do as far as handling it, all of this baby mama drama because we already got Karen to deal with. I really don't want to have to lose more money with Heather, but I'm waiting to find out that that ain't Zach, baby. One is enough. If even if Karen, he the really the father of Karen's, we shall know that too because mm, I need a DNA test after the baby born on that story. You already know. Put in the comments what you think about that whole situation with both of these baby mamas. You know I'm air quoting that one. So, yeah, she gets filled in on that whole situation. And Andy said, do what you got to do. She gives her her work and sends her on her way. Now, in the meantime, uh, Sabrina and Calvin at the house, they get the call from Maurice. Now, Maurice is going off, and he's like, ah, bitch, whatever. You know how Maurice get. Maurice needs to chill with all that cursing people out stuff. When you need help in this bad situation, he pissed off because Sabrina's out. Well, she out, and my friend attorney got me out. And to think that I owe you anything to get you out of here is really crazy if you really look at it but he's freaking out because i know he's scared in there and that's what this is all about he's being scared so he was like just call me back i'm going by andy's after he goes off and i'll meet you then and so calvin basically tells her i'll talk to you later now here we go with the problem of why they in this problem to begin with is oq he's now and uh danny's at work and here he goes sash and pushing up on her so hard to get to know her i'll meet you such and such you know telling her he'd meet her somewhere um but she found out that the the train station is right upstairs because he like you can give me a ride to the train station she's like you can just walk up there so that little lie didn't work and so he's trying to persuade her he's such a nice guy and he's not really what she think and you know made this whole lying story about how his mother um for the guy or for his mother and that's why he on this bracelet for agri and i'm like i think she was bought bought into that mess and i'm like and um danny i don't care how cool this guy is i don't care how good he looks keep saying no please 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 don't fall for victim for that because i really don't think she gonna fall for it but then in the back of my mind i'm like mm, did you really learn from the last time danny if he keeps trying and he keeps with these lies and trying to make his persuade him that her that he's a good guy and she's you know not wanting to judge him probably a black man on a bracelet and knowing how the system is she might fall for it and let this guy in i hope to god she don't i hope preston comes through the airport and sees her with him before he leaves and also, I want Sabrina to hurry up and mention Quincy's name. Why does it take so long for them to have a conversation on who he is? At least say the name. So Danny, I know she's smart enough to be like, wait a minute, Quincy. What does he look like? And because let me tell you, when I when I tell you Danny is, and put in the comments if you think the same, Danny is the catalyst. She is the key to set and Quincy up so this whole thing could be wiped away and Quincy can go to jail. She has to know who he is and it's frustrating me that it's not coming out yet. And then he had the nerve to take her phone and after all the no's and put it in and say, call me. And and that's why, because she has a, his number in her phone, I'm afraid one day she just might. What do y'all think? I want. That's why I need this to hurry up and be revealed. Now, here we got good looking Zach coming through the shop and you know, Karen is melting and oozing, probably all getting all hot and bothered, trying to act like she not because he looking some kind of good. And you know how bad she wants this man. So he was like, okay, can we talk? She's like, come in the office. He's like, we can do this right here. She's like, no, come in the office. After knowing what already happened in that office, why are you in trouble now, Zach? So they go in there. He gives the papers. Pam like, oh, you know, she taking her little digs, but she knowing he looking some kind of fine too. You know, Pam. So he goes in there, gives her the papers, and she goes to sign. He's like, no, 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 don't do that. Um, uh, I, you know, you need to have your attorney look this over. So she was like, no, I trust it. She was like, no. She was like, okay. So then she put the papers down. Then she tries to tell him, you know, congratulations on being a father and also on his engagement. Because at first when she said congratulations, he's like, why? And she told him, and I'm like, oh, Karen, you putting your big girl panties on? You trying to be mature about the situation? 
And she was just really nice so soon after that situation. I don't know. I just didn't expect her to be that cordial and that calm, saying that, oh, the whole letter thing from the mother is what worked. Uh, I don't know. I'm not too sure, Karen. I'm not too sure because you are a woman scorned and you still bitter and you're not that calm. You're not that good with that because the way you flipped in that house just the night before. So she claims she all right. And she thanked him. Now that <laughs> they came out and um, he thanked her. You know, he appreciated it. You know how mature she handled it. And they come out and he leaves and says goodbye, whatever to everyone and says bye to Karen. She calls him back to give him a kiss. And of course he's shocked. Pam shot. Anybody in there probably know them, probably surprised, but you know, and you know, take care of yourself. And she left going on doing hair. Why couldn't you hug him and give him that kiss and wish him the best when you were in private in your office and wished him well so he could just leave? You did that in the shop. But the main reason you didn't want everybody to see what was going on, but you don't mind giving him, calling him, calling him back for a kiss, I think was doing a little too much. And then went on with her hair. You, you not, you could have did that in, in private. So that's why I'm not too sure because lo and behold, lo and behold, Fatima gets uh, to work. Back to the, well, she probably already at the office, but. Angela comes in and said, are you and Zach still together? If you my friend, you know we together. I'm sorry. I do not like Angela. She is trouble. I don't trust it. So she goes to tell her a friend of hers sent her this, shows her her phone. It's the kiss that Karen gave Zach. Now, it kind of looks like a mutual kiss from how the picture was angled but it's always Angela to bring a picture of what Zach did from somebody else that sent her. Now, Melinda, we already know, goes to Karen's shop. She knew about Zach. They exchanged notes on Zach because she was the jilted lover as well from the one night stand. Pissed off. Got all the business about Zach um, and what he did to Karen from Karen. So we know she goes to that shop. Is she the one under the, under the dry that took the picture? Oh, no, this person not you know, um, not messy as what she said in the next week. So we're going to get into that. She showed her the picture. And of course, Fatima like pissed off. Like now she wishing she went to that shot with Zach. Like I know ain't another ninja um, cheating on me. I'm saying trust your man, girl. Trust your man. So when it kicks on last week, you know, she, Fatima's pissed and Angela's basically, you know, she's not trusting it. I don't trust you, Angela. And I like the fact that Fatima was asking her questions like, you know, who's the source? Well, you need to be asking, you know, why he kissed her or whatever. She she switched off of that real quick. You saw that? You shouldn't be asking that about. But she said, I want to know if this who is this person. You got to look at the source of information that she stuck on this picture. But at the same, you don't know how this was concocted. I don't know if it's Karen that concocted him. I don't know if it's Angela, but Angela always so quick to bring something. And who is this woman that just so happened, she tells her she don't even go to Karen's shop. There's somebody else, I guess the girl knows, in the shop that's doing her hair. But yet and still, she she don't know Karen, but she knows that um, Zach, <laughs> is, uh, girlfriend, is or fiance now, is Angela's friend. She know that much, but she don't know Karen. But she know to run and tell Karen, I mean, run and tell um, Angela that Karen's ex, who Angela's friend is with, is up here kissing the ex. She knows that much, but she don't know Karen. It make it make sense. It, it's just, she's always messy, always bringing something, always acting like she's the good friend. But she, her and Melinda are not good friends. And let me tell you something right now. When you happy and you riding high and your stuff is kind of messy with your in your friend's life, as long as stuff is messy with you too, they good. They good. They good with you. But the minute stuff is going right with you and not so great with them, dealing with what she's dealing with with Bryce, 
they don't really want to see you happy always. You know, people can be in your life at certain levels, at certain times. Everyone is not meant to travel with you all the way through your journey. And it may be time for Fatima to find some new friends. Because I really got a bad feeling when it comes to Angela. I don't know. I don't know how she's going to be written to this. But right now, I'm not feeling her. I just think she's a messy individual. Even in 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 um, when she was talking with Madam in the house. Remember, um, with that whole situation, that was messy too. She was all in the business with, with Madam, with Andy. She's just messy. And I don't like her character. So she's she's pissed. So that was that. And then she had the nerve at the end before they finished the conversation was, and when I heard they be having sex in that back room, and the she had to stop her on that. I'm like, you're doing too much. And my thing, Fatima, is stop letting your girl see issues or something possible issue with you and your man. Play it cool. Let them see your maturity and trust your man and talk to him like Andy told her before you start accusing him of something. If you really trust and believe in Zach, stop thinking that that picture was more than what it was. Because that's exactly what Angela wants to see. So I wish Fatima didn't blow off the handle off of that picture so quick before talking to Zach. Oh, what is this? Oh, I'll find out. I'll talk to him later about it and let you know what it was because it probably not nothing. Trust him a little bit more. Now, um... Andy goes and talked to Robin, and he spoke to the source to get the money. The guy wanted, you know, no contract, just the money. But, you know, she, he's gonna, he let Andy know that he's going to have a meeting, you know, I guess with Gary and them later to let him know. But she was like, no, all the guy wants is his money. <laughs> so he's going to have that and looks good like he's going to be able to get what he needs. Little do Gary and Hayden know. So I can't wait till they have that meeting next episode, hopefully, or how long we ever we got to wait to find out what's going down with that. And then he said he's waiting for the judge for Maurice to find out the story. And meanwhile, um... Sabrina and Andy are meeting. She comes to the office. Fatima go gets her, lets her know while she's talking to Andy that um, Sabrina's there. Now, this is something else that teed me off. And let me know how you felt about this. Sabrina is going hard. She's really asking for a lot from a friend. I understand these are your friends from college. They close. Y'all ride or dies. Y'all sisters, okay? But at the end of the day, you have no idea the sacrifice Andy made. And she told her, I gave everything I had for you. And to still go to bat for Maurice, you don't know how much the bail was. You didn't even bother to ask. And now you want another big favor to ask your boss again to get Maurice out when it's not your obligation. And then for Maurice to call and be like, B, you better do this for me. You better whatever. And Sabrina like, okay, don't worry about it. This one, she gets, gets real scatterbrained and piss me off. I'm like, Sabrina, take it down a notch. She don't owe you shit. <laughs> Excuse my language. She don't owe you nothing. As far as Maurice is concerned, and I was so glad that Andy dug in his behind. Let me tell you something, Maurice. You're going to watch how you talking to me. I'm, I am help, you know, only reason I'm helping you is because Sabrina is a friend of mine, but you are no friend of mine. He like, <gasps> and she like, no, no, Andy, don't say it. No, no, no. He needs to hear this. I don't got to do nothing for you. I, it took a lot. Well, how much did you pay Bell for, for Sabrina? That's none of your business. The point is, I don't have to do this for you, but I'm requesting and trying to assist only because she's my friend and this matters to her and you her friend. She didn't even have to entertain the conversation and be like, I can't do nothing for him, Sabrina. I'm sorry. It took a lot. I took a million and a half to get you out of my money and my boss took a million and a half. That was a lot on both of them. And the nerve and the audacity to still bleed this girl dry. And then when she told her how much it cost, oh, my God, did she still ask her for more? What, Sabrina? Then you had the nerve to say, do you think Karen got it? No, you know this woman ain't got that kind of money. And she about to have a baby. And they ain't even bother to ask about Danny because you already know the story with that. But then she said, well, what about Zach? She said, I don't even see why he's even an option. Come on, Sabrina. You ask them for too much. It's one thing to be a nice friend, but you're going too far. You're going too far. Put in the comments, did y'all think like, Sabrina, that it's a wrap? Or do you think she should have been going to bed? If she, is she really in debt? It makes no sense. No, you're not. That's me. 
And it was just too much. And I'm glad she told her. And she was like, oh, my God. Like, and Because and, she, Andy let her know. It's probably going to be about a, a million for him, just like it was for you. I don't have it. I'm done. So I don't know what the case going to be. Like, all we can do is pray that it's not that much for him like it was for you. So then Gary and Hayden are talking. Of course, he bragging about old girl. And Gary like, oh, my God, this is what you called me for. Yeah, she put it on me. I didn't know she could do stuff like that. And, um, you know, like, really? Yeah, this the one. This the one. So I'm saying to myself, oh, yeah, it's working for Tima. It's working. He like, she the one. So Hayden mentioned, uh, well, I want you to know, by the way, Robin, your girl was talking to Robin in the office. And he's like, I don't care about that. He was like, you don't care about it? He was like, no. He was like, yeah, because we get about to take over the company, right? He was like, yeah. And then he said, you know, um, yeah, I'm going to get his behind with the lawsuit. And Gary, like, what are you talking about? You know what he did to me with Fatima. And he was like, yo, get off of that. And then suing him because of the situation with um, Heather, he was like, you need to stop over a chick. You getting this crazy? He was like, why? You, I know you're not talking. We two peas in a pod. Gary, you really are two peas in a pod because you spazzing over a woman too. <laughs> but the situation is totally different because you was heavily involved with Andy. And, you know, y'all had history. This one here over one night stand with Fatima and blew his mind. And now he mad because a quote unquote ex con and took his woman. Yo, so that's a vendetta over something, somebody you will never get. Never get. So he was like, man, no, we not the same. So he pissed Gary off with that. Gary was done and basically ended that conversation. <laughs> he ended that. No, we ain't the same. <laughs> we ain't the same. So Hayden, like, whatever. This woman good. What she got is good. And that's all I'm concerned about right now. <laughs> so now Aaron stops by um, the shop and talks to Karen and tells Karen, you know, the baby needs to eat. And Pam really like, get her out. Do something with her because she get on my last nerve. He was like, you know she can hear you. She was like, I don't care. <laughs> but he tells her we need to go out to eat. I'm going to take you somewhere nice. We've been cooped up in the house a lot with dinner. So she said, that's right. <laughs> So she goes to get ready, and that's when she calls um, Andy to let him know, her know, you know, I'm going out with Aaron. Um, I'll drop the papers. I don't know, before or after. I think she said after dinner, I'll stop by. She said around 9 o'clock. So, um, because Zach got the papers I want you to review. She was like, wow, he done with them already? She was like, yeah. So she was like, okay, cool. Meet me such and such a time, and that was that. Now, Andy and Fatima... Um, Andy asked Fatima what was wrong because she could see that she was pissed off. And she said, um, you know, she thought it was something still with Karen or whatever. She said, you know, how you feeling about that situation? I heard he got the paperwork done. I'm supposed to be, you know, reviewing that. She was like, okay, that's good. But she said, I noticed something wrong. So she showed her the picture. And Andy was kind of shocked. And Andy was like, well, Fatima told her, please don't say nothing to Karen. I don't know if Andy going to really keep that secret. But... She said, I promise, I won't tell. Andy said, well, maybe this is an old photo. She said, it's not, because he had this on. So she was like, oh, God. And Andy advised her, right, talk to your man. Talk to your man and find out what's going on. She all huffing and puffing like a little baby, all pissed off, which I said before, you shouldn't have been throwing all that shade and jumping to the conclusion over your messy behind friend, Angela, and which whoever this friend is that gave her the information. You got to think a little bit, Fatima. So Andy told her, talk to him before you jump the gun. She said, okay. But the strange thing about it is he ain't called me all day. Like, you know, that ninja probably guilty. And that's <laughs> why he ain't called me. What's going on? And she's just about to go off the deep end. I get it, girl. I get it. Because I probably would have been like, yo, 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 what, what's going on? But it's not enough to that picture. It's, you act like they was tonguing down or doing something at a shop in front of people. This is in the shop. This wasn't even in private. This was no big issue. But I think the fact that he ain't supposed to like her and how things went down the night before to even be this close to him just looks a little suspect. I get it, but chill, Fatima. You you can't go that crazy on it. So next, um, Robin got uh, Robin got good news and bad news regarding um, Maurice. He told him he got bail, but it's still one point five million dollars. And she's like, boo, Robin wanted to take her to dinner. And, of course, you know, she's like, no. Now, this this is the funny part. After he gave her that news and said, oh, I can't take you down, so you really that done with me? Oh, I guess when you somebody hurt you or, or did you in, you done. She was like, yeah. 
because you know she said I'm gonna shoot your shot. She said, I appreciate you shooting your shot, but you know what? That's some BS, Andy. Why are you telling that flat out lie? Gary run you through the mill with the wife when he was married. All that hell you went through him, this man strangled you and almost tried to kill you in your apartment. He put some kind of ring on your finger that was locked in like a prisoner that you couldn't even get off your finger. He did all of this madness, plus got you all, uh, Ashton Martin and a condo just so he can spy on you and possess you and own and have control of you. And none of this, now trying to take over your boss's company, not all of this hell that you went through over this one little comment that Robin made, you mean to tell me he's not deserving of a dinner? But you can keep spreading your legs over to Gary after all the hell he put you through. Make it make sense, Andy. Make it make sense. No, not when it's over. It's over after somebody do something wrong to you. That's a lie and you know it. Stop it. You need to get this man another chance. You need to leave that wacko Gary alone and give Robin another chance. That man has put himself out there for you. What you, what you think in the comments, y'all? You think she just leave both of them alone? Give Robin another chance? Stay with Gary? How y'all feel about that? Put it in the comments. Now, as we winding up, um, Andy tells Sabrina that she got the bail. Um, and then that's when she got the nerve to, to ask her, oh, my God, you know how much it costs. And then that's when she finds out how much she really paid. Um and Andy tells her when she mentions Zach I, how I don't believe that that's even an option. And, you know, she just like, it's crazy. I can't believe 1.5 million. And she, you know, yeah, because it, it costs the same for you. It's a serious situation. And then she went on um, of uh, to tell Danny. And Danny was telling her that that was crazy, that she going to go now. She could think about somebody with bio and go to bio for this money. When she spoke to Danny about it, Danny was like, I don't think you know that man like that. All of this money, he was like, dang, what do you think he's Osama bin Laden? Like, y'all y'all cost that much money for the bail? But she's not comfortable with asking bio, and I don't either. You really didn't want to be bothered with this man no more. Wasn't really answering his calls, none of that. But because you think he got a lot of money, and he just prints of this country or whatever, now you're going to ask for money like that? I don't know what bio going to say. I don't know. I think it's a little nervy. And I think you really in a desperate place where you just asking any and everybody. I think you're doing too much, Sabrina. She really getting on my nerves. She doing too much. Because what Sabrina should have did, when she knew that Maurice was still dealing with Q, who robbed y'all bank and put y'all job in jeopardy. And y'all could have got busted for this mess or in trouble and got fired then. But this man, he started still dealing with him. This man who works in your bank, I don't care if you two are good friends. He works in your bank, and he is rooming with and still dealing with the man who robbed your bank. I would tell Maurice, if you don't get this man out of your house, you're going to lose your job. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to fire you because this is not a smart situation to be in. And if he wanted to still keep him there, no. She should have put her foot down with that. from Because this is serious. This was your job. This was a, a serious federal crime. And Q got out. Y'all never thought about how he got out on a bank robbery? Never crossed your mind. I guess not. It's TV. But that's crazy. And so she should have been a little firmer on that situation with Q anyway. Um, but, of course, speaking of Q, he's still at the at the airport, you know, going at it with Danny. This man just wants to get in your house. And if you get him in your house, it's going to be a problem, Danny. Because he's still pushing up on her. And she like, you know, she telling him no. Just, just hoping her sister don't break. So now Maurice um, um, is with the prosecutor. He comes by the cell to say, I don't know how you did it, but you post bail. He was like, okay, great. Now Maurice think he's going to be out. He was like, but it's $1.5 million. And, you know, I don't know how you're going to get it. You're going to get it from that bank robbery money? He said, don't worry about it, blah, blah, blah. You know Maurice is getting all smart with him. And... <laughs> Uh, uh, make it passes at the guy. He was like, well, you go ahead, but I'm going to be watching you because even if you get out, I'm going to be watching how you got the money to get out. So he forever is going to be on Maurice's back. That's why somebody going to have to say something because they're going to have to get a confession from Q so they can get that to the courts and Q can go back in jail and they, and they can show that this is a complete setup and a lie, that confession from Maurice because this there has no weight to this case. But they got to get Q back. And, and it's, 
I think Danny is going to be that one that's going to have to get that from him. So, um, yeah. So that was that. And you know that really scared Maurice. And the situation is um, Andy asked Sabrina. She knows she's not going to flee. But I don't think I'm too keen on him getting out on bail, however they get this money, and Maurice not taking off. I really... I can't. Maurice never been in a situation like this. He doesn't want to go back to jail. He knows how bad this looks. I, I'm glad he's a good friend and not selling Sabrina out. But um, he may be coming close to it because he knows ain't nobody got no over $1.5 million for him. And it's going to be really, really hard because then he's going to probably think Sabrina Bell was that much if she got it. You can't put no demands on like that for anybody because he's going to think now about what Andy told him. And it's true. So it's it's going to be a bad situation where Maurice is going to be scared. And if somebody did post that, like if he get that uh, money from Bio, it's a good chance that Maurice just might run. Put in the comments, do y'all think Maurice, he get bailed out, he may leave? Even if he comes back, you think he may scare them and they like where Maurice at and they can't find him? But then eventually he comes back. What do you think? I don't know. I don't know. I think this is a desperate, scary situation for Maurice. And she really don't know. He never been in this situation, whether he would flee or not. So what do you think? And so now we got um, at the end, Fatima waiting in the parking lot, pissed off. And old nosy behind Ansel. Why Ansel wanted to come to the house so bad? Why does she want, oh, I'm scared of what you might do? Because they know how Fatima is with her history. Yeah, okay, she may flip the script, but this is a personal matter between her and her man. She don't need you there, Angela. She don't need you there. She pressing, pressing, I'm going to come over, I'm going to come over. She was like, no, I got this. I'm like, Angela, go sit down somewhere and handle your, your bisexual man and the issues you got with that and stop, you know, dwelling on Fatima and her man. Why are you so pressed to worry about what's going on in her household? So Fatima said no. She said, I got this. I'm going to go in there and talk to him. So she's having a conversation with, with Zach. And Zach, like, how's your day going? And, you know, real normal and casual. And she's looking at him. Mm-hmm. How your day went? It was good. You know, Karen, it was real easy. You know, um, she went to sign the papers, but I told her no. Let her Andy look over him or whatever. So I left him there. She was like, mm-hmm. Anything else happened? He was like, no. He said, you look a little stressed. You know, he'll help her de-stress or whatever. You know, he... Talking to his girl, make her feel better. She's all stiff with an attitude, and he's still not saying nothing. So she like, okay, nothing special happened today. He like, no. Still saying, you know, he, he wasn't able to talk to Heather. Um, but that's about it. Until she went, bam, with that phone. What is this? <laughs> like, Ninja, what is this? And he looking like, <laughs> it went off. Oh, you saw the preview. He is going to the shop, and he is blazing on Pam. And then he going to make his way to the, to the doggone restaurant. You all hell about to break loose. I'm like, don't go to jail. That's the last thing these people need to do is call the cops on you, Zach, because he is ready to go off thinking Karen set that up. I don't know if Karen said the wrong thing. I don't know. Aaron probably popped into it, and they got into it. But it got crazy. Ah, oh, man, what do you think is going to happen? Um, it's going to be heated this week, and I cannot wait. Is Maurice getting out? Um, what's going on with this meeting when Rob, Hayden and Gary found, finds out that uh, Robin got that dough? He got that dough. And the situation um, with Q still pushing up on Danny. I can't wait to get into it. Till then, please click subscribe. Thanks for coming and joining my channel. Hit uh, share with people. Let's get into this. What our sisters really get into the meat of what you think about the characters and what's going down this season. And uh, hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on future content. Until next time, stay authentically you and remember to live the life you deserve. Peace.